Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nidesh Kumar Singh and we are continuing with our series on Jira tutorials. I hope the previous tutorial you got a very good understanding of what exactly in basic and simple terms Jira is and definitely what it can assist you with. There are more of course to understand. So today we'll be getting started with setting up an account of the Jira to start working with the hands-on practices. So expect more tutorials coming up here after to help you understand more better on the Jira one after the other. So let's set up a quick account to start working with Jira today. In another part of this tutorial, we will be understanding the different types of Jira instances, difference between the server and the cloud instance, how to create a cloud instance for Jira. But before that, let's understand what are the different types of instances available for Jira. Jira comes with two different variants. One is the cloud instance and the second is the server instance. Now cloud, of course, which says that it's hosted somewhere else and the server instance can be hosted within premises. So let's understand more about the details into these differences of these two types of instances. When we talk about the cloud instance of Jira, it is a pre-configured instance for you, where you don't have to worry about having a heavy equipment, infra heavy infrastructures or servers to be deployed in your premises. So generally, if you are a startup organization, you can make use of cloud instances where the complete database is hosted by the Jira cloud itself. So you just have to log in into that using a URL and access the same. It's fast to start up as they use a very high-end infrastructure to host the cloud instances of Jira. And Atlassian will take care of all these things for you. At the same time, you don't have very high cost involved in using a cloud instance of Jira, as you don't have to install a lot of servers and equipment and heavy infrastructures to set up the instance for Jira into the servers. No upgrades are required, because the upgrades are automatically taken care by the Atlassian whenever necessary. When it comes to the security, it has highly secured systems from Atlassian to make sure that your data is completely confidential and is highly secured so that you don't lose it. The only kind of demerit which we can experience as a part of the cloud instance is that you do not have access to database structure or you cannot actually modify any startup information from the Jira instance when using the cloud version of the same. But on the other side, when it comes to server, it is mainly for the bigger organization where they can afford the installation of the server, where they can install, host, or run the entire Jira themselves. So at the same time, we also understand that you need to have an administrator who knows how to install the same, how to configure it, and how to customize the tool according to the organization need. Yes, the another benefit what you get from the server-based instance is that you can manage the tool and you have access to change anything in the database at any point of time. So yes, but yes, it might be complicated at certain point of time to set up and install a lot of additional updates or any kind of add-ons which are required for the organization. So putting it all together, if your organization is a very new or you are independent to learn about Jira, you are free to use cloud server or cloud instance of the Jira. Whereas the server instance of the Jira is for the organizations where we have more than 500 or 600 employees accessing the same tool. And yes, you need to have a clear ownership of any individual in your organization who can manage it as an administrator and do all the reliable activities for you in order to access that on the front end. Not only that, you do see a lot of minor difference between the cloud and server based. The UI and the features or sometimes some of the activities which are being performed and the speed between the cloud and server will be different depending on the infrastructure. And the next part is of course how to create a cloud instance of Jira. So in this tutorial we will create an instance for you and help you understand that how you can actually practice the activities what we will be performing in Jira using a cloud instance which is cheaper, probably free in case of using the same and does not require heavy infrastructure and will be quite fast to perform and repeat the lab exercises for these tutorials. So let's visit theatlassian.com. To get started, all you have to do is reach out to the www.atlassian.com and this will showcase you the page 
the home page of the Atlassian website, where you can generally find a lot of options on the home page itself, something like products, for teams, support, or try now, or maybe buy now option. Because it's very important to understand that what kind of products does the Atlassian offer. So here you can see the list of all the products which Atlassian actually offer to support organizations where some of the common thing which we'll be covering is Zero Software, Zero Core, Zero Service Desk and the same we have just discussed about. But yes, our area of interest as per this tutorial and this course is on the Zero Software. So let's click on this. Now as you come here, you do see the again options like features, product guide, pricing and enterprise additions and so on. But here we do have an option called as get it free to start working on the same. So you can click on this button to start with a free version of the same. But it's just not that free. It, using this free option you get all the features of the complete project and you also get access to the cloud version up to 10 users. So what exactly we get in the free one? So here it is. Each product on a free line offers you to support up to 10 users or 3 agents. That means up to 10 users you can work free of cost and uh, includes 2 GB of storage space, offers community support and it's always free, no credit card needed. That means you won't be asked for any kind of trial version that once your trial period gets over then you will be charged. No, it's completely free. So you can go ahead and make use of this version for your practices or even if you're working in a small scale organization you can make use of it up to 10 users. But above that you would need the commercial license to make use of the same. As a first step, it is asking you if you would like to use any of the supporting product of Jira. But right now we are interested in Jira software only, so you can just click on next. Whereas the other options can also help you to enhance your way of working within the organization. Once you are here on the next page, you will be asked for entering your details to sign up for an account on Atlassian, which will allow basically you to access the details for the same. So you can enter your email address enter your full name, password and other details required in order to meet the expectations to sign up. Not only that, if you want to prefer to use your Google account or Microsoft account or Apple account to sign up, you can also do so. Once you're done signing up, you will be sent with a verification email to confirm your email address. That means you cannot just use any fake email address in order to start working with Atlassian's Jira software. So. Once you are signed up, you will be finally moving to the next page. Well, once you are done signing up and verifying your account, of course, the Jira will help you out to set up your project. Starting right from the very first step, it is to give your site a name. And of course, this will become your default URL to access your project and organization of Atlas in Jira by default. So first of all, you set up with a particular name for the organization. For example, in my case, I'm trying to put it as testing in nutshell as the URL and it will confirm you if this particular URL is available or it's been taken by somebody. If it is available, it will show you a green tick and you can click on the continue button. This wizard will definitely assist you in order to process your overall you know, designing and architecture setup of your project and definitely will ask you a lot of simple questions to set up your project. So just say come and keep doing the steps what they exactly request you to do at any point of time. As a part of the next step, they will be asking you to invite your team to join your project and organization. If you, in case you have your email IDs handy to join your teammates to this project, you can input them here and definitely click on the next. But in case you are not having them right now, or maybe in future you would like to include some of your team members, you can always skip it for right now and add people later. Of course, we will be having a tutorial to help you how exactly to add people to your project later as well. Now, here it is asking you help us set up your Jira, what kind of user you are. So, let's say I'm experienced with Jira or let's say new to Jira so that I don't know anything. This is for the first time I'm working with Jira. My team is new to Agile methodologies? No, I think um, my team is experienced with Agile methodology and we spend our time working together on what kind of project, for example, features, supporting an operation, fixing bugs. So this will help you to set up the project accordingly with all the information what you may need. So let's pick up anything here. 
which will just anyways let you decide that in future as well. So let's go for features here and we have a dash schedule to finish our work. It's a flexible schedule because this is all will the charts and the dashboards will set up accordingly to these questions. No matter what you select, you will have definitely the right options to optimize that at any point of time. If you want, you can also skip this option and do it later. Now, the next step basically shows you what kind of template you want to use for your project. Is it an exchange template? And you do have something called as Canvas here to select. But if you want, you can also make use of the classic templates. So let's click on Explore Classic Templates. And we have Kanban, Scrum, and Bug Tracking. So anytime you can click on this, we will be talking about different templates in the upcoming tutorials. So don't worry about that. So right now, we will be selecting a Scrum type of template to use it in our project. Now it's time to set up a project name for our project. So let's put it as testing in nutshell. And it will automatically pick a short name for your project. And uh, that will be just a code for your project at any point of time. And if you want, you can change your template right at this point as well. So click on create. Now, once you're done doing all your final steps, finally, you are being taken to the home page of your project. And this is the very first page which is shown by default, that is Active Sprint. And this is the very first quick start page of the Jira. So welcome to Jira. And we have finally created an instance to start working on this. Of course, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of features. We will be covering them in simple tutorials. Don't forget, this is testing in a nutshell, and we would like to keep your learnings more simpler and easier. So that's all from this particular episode, team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video, team, and happy learning.